Hi everyone, it's Dot, and welcome to week four of my final 50. I had two challenges this week. My first challenge, delayed onset muscle soreness, also called DOMS. Now I've worked with the trainer twice a week and he knows what my goals are. One is build strength. The second is to help me compete in a tough mutter. So between all the bench presses, squats, dumbbell cleans, I felt great until about a day or two later. Sitting, walking, everything hurt. It got frustrating that I couldn't be as active as I want it to be, even though when you're sore like that, being active actually helps yourself. So when I'm not as active as I'd like to be, I tend to do silly things like eating when I'm bored. Thankfully, I did catch myself, although I snacked a few times when I really wasn't hungry. The great news is I can bench press 65 pounds now 12 times. Soreness just means my muscles are swelling, which causes pain. Basically, my muscles are swelling up with water as they repair themselves, and that's going to trigger some weight gain. But the soreness does go away, as does the water accumulation. What I really care about is getting stronger, building muscle, making sure my bones are strong. Challenge number two isn't that pleasant. It's a little embarrassing to talk about, but it's something a lot of people do go through when they switch over to eating low carb. The last few months I've been dealing with chronic constipation. So in addition to the obvious symptom, I'm also experiencing an upset stomach and sometimes really painful bloating. There's a reason why this might happen. I switched from eating 20 grams of net carbs to 20 grams of total carbs. There's really no wrong way or right way. It's a personal preference. You can eat net carbs or total carbs. All net carbs mean is that you're subtracting fiber from your total carb count. Now, when I switched to total carbs, I naturally started eating fewer vegetables, which ended up cutting my main source of fiber. Now, for a lot of people, that's fine. But for me, not so much, it seems. So starting this week, I'm switching back to net carbs. So I'm going to do a little test and do this for all of November. Another possible reason for my chronic constipation is that it may not be fully hydrated. When you're dehydrated, your body starts pulling water from the colon. The result is the contents of your intestines start becoming drier and harder. Now, when I went low carb, I made the decision to drink half my weight in ounces every day. When I weighed 325 pounds, that meant I was drinking 150 ounces of water a day. So at my current weight, using that formula, my goal is to drink at least 100 ounces of water a day. But I've gotten a little lazy lately and I stopped tracking my water intake. And chances are I'm not hitting my goals. So starting this week, I'm gonna be a lot more mindful of the amount of water I'm drinking. Now when I'm at home, I only drink out of these Turvis cups. And I'll go ahead and link to one below. One reason why I started using them is because my evil cat loves to knock over my drinks and these have really tight fitting lids. The other reason is that these cups hold 24 ounces of liquid, and that makes it a lot easier to track what I'm drinking. Five a day, and I'm at my goal. I also started up taking magnesium supplements on the advice of my doctor. Magnesium is a natural muscle relaxant, and it helps the intestines relax and pulls water into them. You just need to be sure you take the right one. Stay away from magnesium oxide. That's what's in milk of magnesia. Yes, it's good for relieving constipation, but it's not something you can do on a daily basis. If you take it daily, it triggers the opposite effect, diarrhea. My doctor steered me towards magnesium citrate. I'm starting that today, but my doctor wants me to play a little bit with the dosage. I'm starting with the recommended dose and I'm gonna increase it as I go along until I become regular again. Hopefully things will start moving. And if not, then it's gonna be back to the drawing board. As fun as this discussion has been, let's go ahead and get to the weigh-in. Last week, I weighed 213.5 pounds. This week, I'm at 214.2 pounds, a gain of 0.7 pounds. Considering this week's battles with muscle soreness, constipation, and snacking when I'm bored, I'm actually happy with that number. It's a tiny gain. And as I said before, I'm in this for the long haul. So what did I eat this time around? I had seafood a couple of times, salmon and scallops, bunless burgers with salad. Oh yeah, and the husband and I celebrated a wedding anniversary. I posted a video yesterday of our dinner, pork tenderloin wrapped in bacon with balsamic strawberries. Now, I did have wine, but it is my anniversary. But that definitely stopped any potential fat loss for at least a couple of days. 
For this week, you're gonna see everything that I'm eating because the menu will be posted below this video. One thing you may notice about the menu is I only list two meals a day. That's because about three years ago, I discovered an awesome doctor, Dr. Jason Fung, who treats diabetics and obese patients. He found that a low carb diet is only half the equation when it comes to weight loss. The other half is about timing when you eat, or as it's often called in low carb and paleo circles, intermittent fasting. The idea is that all foods raise insulin levels, though obviously some more like carbs than others, fats. But to truly break the insulin resistance cycle, we need to shorten the window that we eat in a day. I first tried this for Lent in 2014, and I found that it was actually really easy. So basically, I eat dinner at 6 p.m. My next meal is at noon the next day, and my last meal of that day is at 6 p.m. Now that's fasting for 18 hours, and eight of those hours I'm sleeping. Keep in mind, I'm still eating all my calories I normally would eat in a day. My menus typically are 15 to 1700 calories a day. So I'm not starving myself. Heck, sometimes I'm not even hungry at noon either. My goal is to eat only when I'm hungry. I'm putting some links below, check them out. And if you're interested in trying something like that, I would suggest you talk to your doctor first. Thank you for joining me in the final 50 and checking out my progress. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Please keep your questions and comments coming. I not only enjoy reading them, I love answering them, and I love the engagement I'm seeing on the channel. And until next time, I'll see ya.